Hi everybody, welcome back to Rich Reviews and today we're going to provide you with episode one of a workshop series on the Lotus Amira. Workshop one is going to cover off simple things like how to disconnect your battery and why you might want to disconnect the battery, how to read diagnostic information through the OBD2 port. Um, diagnostic information will be read from the ECUs in the car so it enables you to read that information to understand what the errors are that your car might be reporting because these cars are reporting a lot of errors and a lot of issues often because these are new cars you get foibles with new cars but it's very enabling for the owner to be able to read that information to understand what that information is before they put the car into a dealership for remediation work so this is going to help you in understanding what those errors are that you're getting up, coming up on your dashboard to do with SOS or to do with the ambient intake, air temperature, etc. And I've experienced those errors and I've used my OBD2 reader to read the information from the OBD2 port, from the ECUs via the OBD2 port and to reset those errors. And I'll go through with you how you might do that. Today's video is presented in partnership with Hampson Auctions, one of the UK's leading classic, performance and supercar auction houses. Their next sale takes place on the 24th of November at the magnificent Bowlesworth Castle in Cheshire. Modern cars have electronic management units and sometimes these electronic management units report errors and sometimes these errors can be correct and sometimes these errors can be false and these errors range in priority. They can be really bad so it means that you shouldn't be driving the car, you should stop straight away or they may be foible issues or they may actually just be issues that have occurred that aren't actually reporting any real issues, it's just a glitch in the software or a glitch in the car itself. Now we come on to Lotus. Lotus is having a lot of glitches at the moment with a lot of check engine lights being reported. Now check engine light is also known as a CEL which is just an acronym of check engine light and these check engine lights come up on the dash and they report issues with the car. A check engine light is in effect a warning from one of the management units on the car saying that there's something wrong and it's telling you what that might be by the type of light that's being reported but the only way to know for sure what that issue is is to connect an OBD2 reader to the OBD2 port on the car and to scan the ECUs on the car to understand what this specific error is and I cannot emphasize enough guys you guys with supercar sports cars you should be buying yourself an OBD2 reader, even if you're not an engineer or technically aware, just so you can empower yourself with that information. So when you go to your dealers, you can say, okay, I know about this error, can you resolve it? And it may be that you're not confident with how you're liaising with a dealer. So this information will provide you a lot more confidence in knowing, to be blunt, that the dealership isn't being disingenuous and that the work being performed is operating on the actual actions that you need to be repaired and there aren't any additional items being added to that list for whatever reason. I'm trying to be not uh, condemning anybody here. But an easy way to clear ECU states and check engine lights often is to disconnect the battery. So it's an easy win. So the first thing often that people try and do to clear these check engine lights on Ferraris and supercars in general and sports cars like the Lotus Mirror is to disconnect the, the earth on the battery. And I'm just going to walk you through quickly how to do that. Then I'm going to walk you through how to connect an OBD2 reader to the OBD2 port and to scan the ECUs on the Lotus Mirror to see if there's any warnings and to read those particular warnings. So let's go to the back where the battery is held. Now the battery in the Lotus Mirror, first of all, got to open up the, the hatch. Now the battery is stored in the luggage compartment to the side. It's stored behind this unit. I've, I've um, taken off the nuts already off these, off these locators to be able to enable quick access to this section. Now you'll notice that mine has a CTEC battery conditioner connector here and this has been added third party and this is often an addition that's put into these Lotus and Mirrors and this enables me through 
removal of the cap to be able to quickly connect a CTEC battery conditioner to be able to keep the battery up to optimum position. As you can see here, it's reporting that the battery is in good condition because it's got a three stage traffic light, red, yellow and green warning to show what state the battery's in and it's showing green at the moment, obviously a full state because I've been kept keeping it on the battery conditioner as you guys should be, should be doing. So, the nuts on here are just finger tight. So you just undo these nuts by rolling them back, finger tight. And be careful because there's a washer connected on the back there. So make sure that when you remove the nuts, you're also removing the washers and the washers don't fall down the back. And this is what they look like. This is the nut, this is the washer. So the washer is obviously on there like so. And then the nut is just on here like so. And they're only finger tight. So you can just undo them quite easily. So when you put them back on again, don't do the murder tight because they just don't need to be murder tight. I'll just put that back there. Now, when you come to removing this, because you've got to take off this little compartment to be able to gain access to the battery, it's held in place underneath the carpet. So it locates underneath the carpet because there's a little flat pack, flat section here that locates underneath. So it makes it look nice and neat. And also what you can't see is right here in the corner, there's some locators that go into the side section of the luggage compartment. So first of all, when you're disconnecting this and when you're pulling this compartment out to gain access to the battery, you have to first of all clear it from the rods and then you pull it out from the slots in the side of the car. So don't try and wrench it, just be careful. And again, I've talked about this, engineering empathy. And then as you pull it out, just be careful then because if you've got one of these CTEC battery conditioner sockets that's been um, kindly provided by your previous owner or by yourself, then make sure you don't wrench the wiring. You know, you want to leave the wiring where it is and you don't want to put any excess strain on this, but this provides you enough access. Now, a lot of people say that you need to remove the bracket here to be able to slide the battery out to be able to disconnect the earth. Now, that isn't the case. If you're removing the battery, yes, you have to, dis you have to take off this bracket. Um, so you'd have to take off these nuts, take off this bracket, and then you can slide the battery out. But here we're just talking about disconnecting the earth. So the earth is on the left hand side. This is the positive and that's the negative. So you just want to disconnect the earth and you want to make sure you don't short it across onto anything else. You want to do it nice and cleanly. Um, and whenever you do any work on the car, that's to do with anything to do with the electrical system on the car, then first of all, you should be disconnecting the earth on the battery. I always did it on the Ferrari with all those workshop series that I did on my Ferrari. First thing I always did was disconnect the earth on the battery because you don't want to short these ECUs out on these cars because it costs an absolute fortune if you blow an ECU. So you need a small ratchet, a small socket ratchet. Now this is just a quarter inch drive socket ratchet. It's nice and small. You don't need much leverage, much torque, and this gets in there nice and nimbly. And this is a good old number 10 socket. So you need good old your 10 mil socket. So this is just a straight 10 mil socket, which everybody has um, if you haven't already lost it because these go missing all the time because they're in such common use. So just a quarter inch drive socket or ratchet, quarter inch drive ratchet. And then when you put that in there, you want to connect it through and you want to just slot it through and access the earth. Now we're going to try and show you as clearly as possible here. I've got a little torch here because it's right in the recess. Hopefully you can see that all right, guys. You can see there's the earth and there's a little nut, the 10 mil nut on the earth. And all you do, you have to make sure, be careful of this electrical wiring. You can disconnect this if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. You don't need to just put on your socket. Make sure that you've put the wrench on to turn to undo. And then just put your, your wrench on there and then you can just undo it from there. And you can see with a nice little quarter inch drive ratchet, you have all the room there to be able to then loosen off the earth and then to be able to pull the earth clear. Now, I don't want to disconnect the earth. I've just loosened it off of there, but I don't want to disconnect it on my car. I've already done it before because I wanted to try and clear an error state in the check, um, check engine light error state, which I'll go through with you in a minute. But here, I'm just showing you just for this video how to disconnect the earth. Now, when you tighten it back up again, it doesn't need to be tightened up murder tight, guys, okay? You don't need to do these things murder tight. It just needs to be nipped up and you need to make sure that when you're pushing the earth back on the, the connector back onto the earth post that it's pushed right down as it is here you want to make sure it's not high it's pushed right down before you tighten the nut back up again 
Now, if you're clearing a check engine light state, and if we, or if you're wanting to reset the management systems for whatever reason on the Lotus Amira, then disconnect the earth, pull the earth lead to one side, just clear, and just leave it for 10 minutes, just to make sure that all the ECUs clear their states and any capacitors clear their state as well, because capacitors hold a certain charge, and sometimes some long, long storage capacitors hold a charge for a finite period of time. I'm not saying they'll hold the charge for 10 minutes, but if you, let, if you disconnect the battery for 10 minutes, then you're absolutely sure it's cleared any states that would need clearing or that could be cleared by disconnecting the battery. So that's how you disconnect the battery. Now I'm just gonna show you how to pop this compartment back in again. Obviously I've got to be careful because I've got my carpet section here I've got to lift up. And I'll make sure that this is put in properly and it's not fouling any cabling or any of this CTEC connector cabling. You can see here, by the way, that's where the prongs slot into on the side of this case. So we've got some prongs that go into that section there, which is in this, the end here. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to locate those. So you, so you make sure you've got the carpet up, got the carpet up properly, and you slide, it's a little bit fiddly, you slide the case along, and then when you've got it near there, you can feel it with your hands at the back where the prongs are. You can feel where you're locating it. And I've just located it back there so you can see it's nice and snug at the back. I'll just put a torch in there so you can get a bit of a better view. So back into this section. So those locators have gone in nicely behind that section of carpet. And then all we need to do is put the, push these push this cover back over these threads and then pop our nuts back on again. If you were looking to purchase your first supercar or add a car to your collection, Rich Reviews has already helped multiple owners secure their dream supercar. We have a mix and match of services to help take the pain away to ensure a happy, memorable purchase away from the stress that can be caused by car research and dealing negotiations. Our mix and match of services include telephone support calls, pre-purchase inspection and car collection video. For more information, please contact me via a message in the comments below or at the following email address. Now back to the video. So now then you finish tightening these up. When you finish tightening these up, just finger tight. You don't need to be murder tight. Just nice finger tight. Just a little bit of a nip up. And that's it. The case is back on again and job done. Hopefully that then will have hopefully that then will have reset any check engine lights that you have uh, that you might have wanted to clear now when you restart the car usually it has to go through some sort of reconfiguration state on the ferraris it's quite a, a reconfiguration stage you had to go whereby you have to drop the windows raise the windows etc etc um, i don't think you have to do that on the lotuses um, but what you might have to do is just leave it ticking over for a while while the direct port injection system and um, reconfigures itself and puts the known states back into the ECUs which is common practice because you've probably cleared out those states by disconnecting the battery but that automatically occurs so you just have to leave the car ticking over for a few minutes that is an assumption I'm making I don't know that particularly about Lotuses I know that that's the case for other supercars so now we've dealt with how to disconnect the battery but let's go through now say your check engine light hasn't been cleared and you need to read it from the OBD2 port so this is where you have to go inside the car and you have to get a bit a bit down and personal <laughs> down and personal with your OBD2 port now the OBD ports were introduced some by some time back in the 80s due to management systems coming on board in cars and OBD2 ports gave uh, manufacturers access to be able to configure those ECUs and configure states and to reset states on cars but there was no governance around these OBD2 OBD, there was no but there was no governance around these OBD ports and they were called OBD1 when of course they brought out the OBD2 port so that's classed as the OBD1 port what that meant was that all the separate independent workshops had to buy all the different OBD readers to be able to interact with all the different car manufacturers because they were all proprietary because there wasn't a standard that was set and they weren't forced to provide a standard approach to communicating with the ECUs through the OBD port because 
there wasn't legislation forcing them to do that. So of course they made it all proprietary, so it was very hard for any independents to work on their cars. So the independents had to buy all these proprietary bits of kit and it got very expensive and very stupid. And of course very controlling and very tie-in, you know. So what happened in 1996, a governing body decided in America that we've had enough of this, that we would standardize this and we've made it easy for independents to be able to access the information in these cars through the OBD port and thereby they ratified a port called the OBD2 port. Now OBD means onboard diagnostics so in effect there is now an onboard diagnostics port that from 1996 was made compulsory across the globe pretty much and that that type of port has to be applied to and configured within all modern cars from 1996 onwards. So every car post 1996 will have an OBD2 port somewhere in the interior of the car and commonly they reside in the driver's location underneath the steering wheel which is exactly where it is on the Lotus and Mira. To be able to see where this was I had to get upside down in the car by the way that's just you know what you have to do with these things. So the OBD2 port on a Lotus and Mira you have to follow the steering column line all the way down and this is very common practice for most cars and you come down here and then the OBD2 port is just a little bit to the left so you go down the center line and then a little bit to the left and there it is there and it's projected out and it's retained in there it's a little bit loose and it's just how it's retained it's not bolted in it's got these little clip retainers on there I had a look at it before when I read the port so that's the port you've got to connect to and that's a standard OBD2 port say so all cars post 1996 have to have an OBD2 port and before that it was an OBD port so let's get out the OBD2 reader. All you have in general is you have a reader and you have a cable and then the cable connects to the OBD2 port and the cable connects one side to the OBD2 reader. So this is just a simple electronic unit and it gets its power from the OBD2 port as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just connect the OBD2 port to this cable which will then provide me access to the reader. Obviously this port has to be able to provide access so as you can put the cable put a, a connector on there to be able to access the port so it's very simple how you put it on it literally just presses on like so so that's the cable connected onto the OBD2 port then from there you just connect the cable to your OBD2 reader and then you press Sometimes you have to press the power on on car, sometimes it self powers it, but you can see here it's powered on with the diagnostic system. So there's a generic section on this Foxwell unit, which is just OBD2 section here. And so if you just navigate to that section, again, um, you know, you're going to have all different types of, of um, diagnostic readers. So this is just in relation to this Foxwell unit. But on your diagnostic readers, you should have a generic OBD2 area, which you should be able to go to and then click on. And if I click on that section, it's reading the port now. And it says I can do an auto scan. So that is what I'm going to do. So from there, you'll just do a quick auto scan and I'm going to scan the systems to find out if there's any errors available. Now, as you can see here, it says codes found zero. And um, that's because there's no check engine lights on my car at the moment. So there's, there's no codes that are found. But I did have the common air intake temperature error that came up as a check engine light on the car and I disconnected the battery to try and clear that code and it never cleared the code. The only way I could clear that code was to use the OBD2 reader and to go into the actual code on this OBD2 reader and clear the code manually and this enabled me to do that. Otherwise you would have been into the car going into a dealership. Now these cars are still under warranty so I'm sure they would have done that without charging you but there is a possibility that they could still charge you so if you had your own OBD2 reader you could have cleared it yourself. So that provides you a little bit of information in how to read codes, etc., and to, to be able to clear the codes yourself. Whatever you do, guys, I really recommend you buy yourself an OBD2 port reader. An OBD2 port reader is invaluable for an owner of a car of these types of sports, sports cars and supercars to be able to understand what the errors are that your cars are reporting, especially with Lotuses that are reporting a lot of errors at the moment with a Lotus Amira, because it's a new car and you're gonna get a lot of foibles and there's a lot of firmware updates coming to these cars all the time to try and correct these issues but at the moment there's still some of these outstanding issues that are, are occurring so this will help you try and resolve those issues obviously if you've got a major error then don't drive the car and make sure you take it to your dealership 
Um, first of all, I would recommend if you've got an error coming in, a standard error coming in on these cars, that you reset it with your own OBD2 reader. And if the error comes back again, then you need to start diagnosing further to try and find out what the actual fault is. Because that means then probably it isn't a foible, probably there is actually something wrong with the car. It could be a sensor failed or it could be something major wrong with the car. In which case, obviously, that needs to be resolved and could be needing to be resolved urgently, depending on the type of error that is being displayed. So I hope that's provided you a lot of help with regards to being able to understand how to read how to read diagnostic information from the ECUs through the OBD2 port and a little bit of inf background information about what an OBD2 port is and why you need them and why they exist on cars from the 1980s onwards and why the OBD2 port exists from 1996 onwards.